Interesting. Welcome to DG360. Our fans here are always keeping us posted on what's happening in the internets. It looks like Star Atlas has created a channel, a Twitch channel. Welcome to the fam, no Joe. Little fam dance. Welcome to the fam. Glad to have you aboard, dude. I don't know how much, how many of you out there have been keeping up on the drama between our friend Erad and Michael Wagner, who is the CEO of Star Atlas. Now, Star Atlas is a game I am looking forward to. Uh, I really want to see if there can be a game that can incorporate uh, crypto properly and be a game that is play and earn and not play to earn. Um, I thought Star Atlas was going to be that game. The longer things continue, the more I'm feeling like it's not going to be. And primarily that is because Michael Wagner, the CEO of Star Atlas, went after uh, our friend, the Eradicator, a month ago. And he went after him for Erad's opinions. Erad doesn't know too much about blockchain gaming or the space in general, NFTs, but um, I'm sure he's looking into it more. Uh, but this probably put a bad taste in his mouth, put a bad taste in mine when Michael Wagner decided to give uh, Erad um, a copyright strike. And he did it based on the fact that he was... Uh, angry with them and got in a Twitter argument, a Twitter argument. Imagine being the CEO of a company and getting in a twi Twitter argument. <laughs> but I mean, like, I don't, that looks really bad. It looks very pathetic. And, you know, I was much, I was, I was the type of guy who's very much interested in this space, looking forward to this title. We're using Unreal Engine 5. Some of the assets in game are looking pretty good to me. Some of them, some of them not. Uh, the environments are looking really crisp. The flight experience we just got updated. We saw we saw the flight experience of some of these um, looked a bit better because they were flying a different ship, and I, I didn't realize the physics were different with the different ships. I didn't realize they had that in the game yet. So that was interesting to me. But but the behavior of the CEO was something that I don't think I can excuse. And I want to continue covering the project because I'm interested in owning things in a video game that are tangible and could help me out in real life. I think that's how I want to sum that up. I think it's very fascinating to have in-game economies that actually mean more because they are connected to the real world. And I find that connection fascinating. That's really one of the main reasons I'm looking into Star Atlas and games like Star Atlas. I don't want a theme of play to earn because play to earn has a connotation that you have to work and grind for the in-game cryptocurrency, right? That they are giving you the limitations. I want a game that doesn't have limitations, that's designed to support a player-driven economy, and that player-driven economy, right, having actual assets in a game that I can transfer over into the real world and have real tangible wealth. A wealth effect from a video game is a very enticing morsel now some companies capitalize off of that that's the mistake that's the play to earn model that's the play to earn model i agree it's shit i don't like it it's scammy Bah. and then there's a model i've coined about a year and a half ago i think it was about a year and a half two years ago i'm not saying i'm one of the first ones to talk about this but i think that there's so many numbskulls in this space developers and content creators alike that they really never describe it in such specifics where you feel like you can walk away and understand what the fuck is going on. I don't think there's any content creators who are who are versed in this to the point where they can translate it to uh, you know people who aren't so well versed in the space. So what I'm trying to talk about is a play and earn experience. I want to break that down for a moment and just tell you the difference between play to earn and play and earn. And play to earn generally comes off very scammy, and I talked about that. Play and earn is something where I feel like when a game developer can step in in this space and realize 
the, the, the connection is actually the game and that, oh, you know, whoa, shocker. <laughs> it's actually the game, you know. When the focus is on the game and the and the currency and all the aspects of digital assets come after the game, that's that's generally what I like in the inception of these types of projects is the play and earn type of type of mentality from game development. That's what I want to see. I haven't really seen it yet. I like personally a company called Gala. It, I don't know where they're going to go with their with their gaming, but I like the fact that they're a large studio with a lot of very infamous uh, and famous developers <laughs> that are stepping in the space and they're creating like a, a a plethora, if you will, of of games, which I think will be interesting to follow. Um, but I I want to see a company that gets into it the nitty gritty. And I feel like Star Atlas captured a little bit of what Star Citizen was trying to do by giving us these grandiose ships and this experience where we're out in space. And I feel like it it was calculated. I feel like that was taken. Uh, But it's not the first time things have happened like that in the gaming industry. So, you know, it's, it's nothing that you can be like, oh, you're very bad people for doing that. I mean, that's been happening for ages in the gaming industry. That's nothing new. But what I want to see is a play and earn mentality where the game design comes first because gamers. Can I also get it? I need an amen on that one. Yes, stop. Can I get an amen? Yes. Because I do not really see that 110%. I have not seen a title that's hit me square in the face that's like, hey, I am going to give you a game that you will never forget, that you will love to play, and I'm also going to hook up a component of a supply and demand economy in the game that translates over to real tangible wealth in the real world, and we're going to have fun with it. And we're going to police it to make sure that you know people aren't getting taken advantage of, and we're going to keep things up to date, and we want to make sure that you have a fun time. And we don't want it to feel like work for you unless you want to make it your work. You know, like that's the kind of experience I'm looking for in this space. Now, I want to check this out. This is Star Atlas's channel. I I believe, I'm not quite sure if this is their official channel or not. It seems to be. Uh, But I, I saw Michael Wagner appear on here. And I thought to myself, after everything I've watched with with the Eradicator and what we've seen happen, and what Michael Wagner, that's this Twitter battle that he went through with the Eradicator, I want to see if there's any redeeming qualities in this in this um, video that they've produced here, and I want to see him talk about the game. I want to really see him talk about his game. Let's see where the focus is at. Thanks very much, Dan, and. Hello again, everyone. You know, major kudos to Dan for his work on structuring this sustainable path to decentralization. This idea of a globally distributed digital government is completely radical. It's untested and it's unproven and it's right. sure That's to be full of space. challenges. Yeah. But I believe it to be one of the core features empowering each and every one of you going into the future going to take time and ingenuity and a tolerance for iteration. But getting this right can be empowering and transformative for millions or potentially billions of people. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. As a continuation of the governance discussion, I'm going to outline the Atlas Locker, the next feature addition to the DAO platform, as well as the associated seller market fee structure being added to the marketplace. Now, I know no one likes paying fees. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Listen to me. (laughs) I don't know if this is suitable for a gaming audience. You know, like this is just going to make the people that want to play the game just fall asleep. Right. The people like myself that are traders that are that have that uh, background that are financial dudes. Yeah, this is an interesting talk for me. This is interesting talk for me. But see, like, this is what I guess I'm trying to get across. This is all well and good, you know, to have this content here to explain this, right? Well, I don't really think you're hitting your core base or the people that you're looking for, which are the gamers. These are the people that are going to support your project, right? I think more people 
are interested in the actual content of the game and not necessarily the components of the economic features. Although I am, I am one of those dudes who's very interested in that, right? But like they're missing out on their core demographic. What they're focusing on now by by focusing on on the financial side is they're hitting the demographic of people uh, like myself and people that are interested in the economic features, right? Which is a niche portion of what they need to be going after right now. I don't know why I have to explain these things to people that are supposed to be professionals. Um, it is a new space, like Michael has said, so maybe perhaps there there's a disconnect here where you know what we have to do as a company in this space is, like if I were a CEO, if I were Michael Wagner right now, I would say here's our focus right now content of game development the game focus on that content the economic talks and everything with the money making features and stuff we can talk about this stuff later when we see core game development you want to add this in you know you want to mix it up make a gumbo okay maybe that's what's happening here and i'm just jumping in on this video at this particular part but this i believe is the first appearance of michael wagner in this video here that's over two hours i think i think it's a two hour some stream that they had it looks like it was pre-done and this is the first appearance and we're talking about the dow we're talking about the money and i, I can understand the disconnect i can understand gamers looking at this and saying what the fuck am i doing here watching this video right it's very basic for me to see that they're they're not doing this correctly I don't know why I have to be the guy, the internet guy, that has this understanding, and they don't. Like, I feel like they need somebody like me to tell them exactly how to market their product. They're not marketing their product correctly at all. We use Star Citizen as, as an example, right? It's not the perfect analogy. But in terms of scope and what this company is trying to do to what Cloud Imperium is trying to do. Even Cloud Imperium, Chris, Roberts, Star Citizen started off as like a dream, right? Chris is very good at marketing a product. Chris is a salesman. Chris has experience also, which helped out big time because a lot of people like us that are a little bit older, we played the games we had fun with Chris Roberts games. We know who Chris Roberts is. He was like an icon. He is a legend in the 90s, right? He had that going for him. Let's let's take that out of the equation for a moment. And let's just talk about the beginning phase of a new development, of a new game. You have to connect instantly and create this, this bond, if you will, with the gamer if you are the developer. You have to easily portray what it is that you are selling and you have to do it in a manner which shows that you're passionate about it. And you have to focus on the game. <laughs> what is going on here? How, how are they so disconnected? And, I, and, I, and I, I will say this because I feel like the focus is not on the game with Star Atlas. I still feel like the focus is not on the game with Star Atlas. And that in the gamer side of me frustrates the shit out of me. Right? Chris directly related to the gamers and told them what it is that he wanted to do. When when the gamers wanted more from him, he said, okay, cool. If you want more, I will put these things up for vote. And we just voted yes, 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 right down the list. We are the reason Star Citizen's taking so long. Let's be honest. <laughs> we are the reason. We want everything, okay? Now, let's let's fast forward here. We talk about cryptocurrency blockchain gaming and, and here we go and, and i'm waiting for somebody to step in this space with some heart with some passion a developer that really wants to make a great experience a game right with all the added benefits of connecting real tangible wealth ownership awesome awesome i love that that's why i love the space yeah tons of scammy shit yeah, tons of people coming in with bad intent, 99% of them. I'm looking for that 1%. I'm looking for that company that comes in and says, hey, we want to build this game. We want you to have fun with this game. 
and we're going to give you benefits that will transfer to your real life that is real tangible wealth while you're having fun. Where is that? When I watch this, do any of you, do you, any of you feel that? It doesn't come off the page. You know what I mean? It's very flat. But I think you'll find that the Atlas Locker goes a long way in creating ecosystem benefit to measure it with these new costs. Before I get into the specific functionality of the new <laughs> locker, I wanted to provide a high-level overview no, it doesn't, of the updated economic architecture that this feature unlocks. The infographic that we're looking at outlines the bi-directional connection points between three core pillars of the Star Atlas ecosystem, gaming products, marketplace, and the DAO. This twin loop allows for the free flow of users in both directions. And with the introduction of the Again, Atlas Locker, trying, we bring all three of these core pillars. They're trying to focus on the DAO right now, which is like they're trying to focus on their cryptocurrency, right? Which is both called Atlas and Polis. There's two different tokens that they're using in the game. And they're trying to show you the use case for the value of the tokens. So what they're trying to do right now is they're trying to explain, like for people that are interested in the tokens, the cryptocurrencies, this is what we're trying to do with this project so that you have some type of redeeming value. Now, these are for people that have currently already bought Atlas tokens. These are for people that have some investment in it. I would tell you guys, be very careful in this space. Like, really careful because, like, right now it is so infancy stage that I wouldn't put all your marbles into one game. It's one of the other reasons I like Gala, not financial advice, but Gala does like multiple games. So if one game fails, there's another one. And, you know, but what I don't like about Gala is their white paper is a bit vague. Anyway, I'm not going to get into the cryptocurrency discussion. That's for another time in another channel. But what they're trying to do here is they're trying to show you like what's important to them. So interestingly enough, let's look at this pie. Let's look at how they split this up. And look at the focus is on the DAO first. The focus is on the economic architecture. That's fine. I understand. There's a lot to do here. It's a new space. But you've got the DAO. You've got the gameplay, which is, you know, oh, hey, look, there's actual gameplay on here as a pillar. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. At least they put it on there. <laughs> Thank God. Could you imagine? Like, I, I almost thought for a moment gameplay was not going to be there. <laughs> and then they have the marketplace, which is another like money, like give us money. So you've got the the tan you've got the tangible investment side of the game, which is the Dow. Okay. This is for people that are interested in investment and the money making in the game. You've got the marketplace, which is pretty much the NFT side of things, which is sucking the money in, you know, and bringing in revenue through NFT sales. Some people say they're going to be worth something. Some people say they won't be worth something. Who knows? That's that's just basic supply and demand, uh, economic uh, supply and demand. That's just the laws of supply and demand. Who knows what's going to happen right there in the NFT space when it comes to that? I think portions of it will be successful. I think a lot of it won't. Now we get to the most important part, the gameplay. Uh, also, if you read the little bullet points b below gameplay, player engages in gameplay. <laughs> what? What? Okay. What else about the gameplay? <laughs> player engages in gameplay. I figured that if it was gameplay, that I would somehow be engaged in the gameplay. <laughs> I already I already pieced that shit together, okay? Gameplay, bullet point below gameplay is gameplay. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Woo! Okay. Bullet point under gameplay gameplay. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting salad vibes. I am getting some salad vibes here. Hold on one sec. <laughs> One second here. Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This chart. Incoming salad vibes. This chart's giving me salad vibes, man. Total salad. Good call on that, my friend. Good call on that one. The bullet point below gameplay gameplay is player claims Atlas rewards. Okay, now, 
<laughs> we're going right back to the DAO. We're going right back to the, the cryptocurrency functionality of the game. So like the gameplay really doesn't tell us anything. Like we're not we're not learning anything here. Uh us together into a cohesive loop, mm -hmm. a virtuous feedback cycle. Yeah. So let me start at the top with gaming. <laughs> Um, as gaming is really the centerpiece of our metaversal experience. I mean, it should and be specifically yes. the yes. connection between. Okay. Yes. Thank God I'm hearing this from him. It's the first time I've heard something. Maybe he's been watching the channel a little bit more. Thank God. Now, whether he means it or not is another thing. <laughs> that, that's whether he actually means that is like, <laughs> like, let's see though. Let's see. Let's see. Between gaming and the marketplace. The marketplace is really the entry point and exit point for the player experience. You buy ships and assets to get into the game and use that same facility to sell anything that you hold or have collected or crafted. Okay, the one of the cool things about this that I've that I've since learned uh, the past couple of weeks since I've been kind of delving into it is that I'm warning you. Oh shit. <laughs> Next time, it's gonna be glass. That was one hell of an alert. By the way, they didn't edit their audio. Let's just say that right now. They didn't edit their audio great because that's I had to take my board and I had to pump it up because the volume is so low on this. So they get they get a fail for that. Thank you, Mod81. My God, dude. Ten community subs. I hope life is going better for you, my friend. I know my, mine's a complete shit storm. I hope your life's going better, Mod81. It's good to see you here, and thank you so much for those 10 community subs. That was super generous of you, man. Thank you so much. All right, let's get back to what Michael's saying here real quick. He's, he's actually saying the gameplay is essential. <laughs> the, the connection of the game and the game itself is very important. That's finally Michael saying something that maybe I, I might believe that he means. Along the way. But beyond that, it is the engine room for the entire economy. It is what facilitates commerce between players, and as we'll find, will be critical in the crafting and manufacturing supply chain loops that are to come in the future. Moving over. To so the, you will be able to do this in game as well. So they have something called Marketplace where you can go to their website and buy and sell, okay? But they also have, they're also planning to do it in game, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, so in terms of that, that's how. Now I'm answering Tech's question because he says, how is this different from SC selling ships? If you consider that people buy ships on the website through their marketplace on Cloud Imperium, and there's a gray market where they can resell the ships, there's not really any difference other than it's actually easier to buy and sell on Star Atlas because you're buying the NFT and it's an easier transaction. So that's the irony that people don't understand about buying and selling between Star Citizen and Star Atlas, because on the gray market there's a whole bunch of feet, there's a whole bunch of uh, steps in the transaction process that could be kind of fucked. Uh, on on the on the Star Atlas uh, buy and sell side of things, it's a very simple transaction. You know, yeah, completely easier and quicker because you're buying the NFT and you're selling the NFT. So you can set up a smart contract that way. I believe it's through the Solana network and you can buy and sell NFTs through through your wallet uh, on the Solana network. Uh, and it's like low transaction fee. It's like pennies. It doesn't even cost anything. So that's another benefit. You, you don't have any fees taken out. Like there's a very small minimal fee. So there's your, I hope I'm answering that. Yeah, I, I hope I'm answering that good for you, Tech. To gaming in the DAO, well, as Dan just outlined, the Universal DAO drives the future of. Game I think they should, but they they have such a bad taste. And, like gamers have such a bad taste of NFTs. You know what I'm saying, Tech? Within the that game, it might can be considered like a at bad the faction move. and regional level enable, enable in-game political strategy, one of the core pillars of Star Atlas. We're moving in the other it's direction. Because, well, and you know this is, is the, this is what makes me mad as somebody knowledgeable in in game development and uh, in the financial world. Um, what makes me mad is that people like Michael and others who are creating these games that, that are pushing boundaries came into the space like snake oil salesmen. They came into the space trying to make their money first and worry about the game later. Uh, that is something, you know, and I'm, you know, who knows? They, they, I don't know. Michael might be super passionate about this. 
I haven't watched enough of Michael speak to know if I, I to get a good read if he's super passionate about Star Atlas. Um, when I see him speak a lot, it's usually in in regards to how the actual functioning of the tokens are going to work and the economy is going to work. It's usually financially related. I don't know. Like every time I see Michael, I don't I don't hear a lot of passion about Star Atlas, but I have not seen Michael, uh, a lot of videos of Michael. So, you know, there's that. The primary driver of revenue to the Dow. And this is accomplished through the recapture of a variety of operating. A lot expenses. of it can They're operate like that, Red Bear. A lot of it can operate like that. Purchasing R four to participate in factions. I, I love the talks happening here. I love to to discuss these these topics. Red Bear says, "Sorry, DJ, I don't like NFTs. I am old fashioned. I am sure this is going to be another version of loot box version. I am uh, a bit fed up with it. And some developers will. It really comes down to the developer, Red Bears, like how." The, the developer is going to utilize uh, the NFT, how they're going to introduce it into the game, whether it's going to have value or not to you, right? There's so many variables here. Um, but yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying because a lot of developers can use the NFTs like loot boxes if they want to. But on the other hand, a lot of them can use them as player-owned assets. One of the reasons I do like Star Atlas is because when you're buying the NFT of the ship, you actually own the ship in-game. A lot of people are, are are not aware of the fact that you buy an NFT, you own a digital asset in real life, and that translates over into the game. Then I get the question like, oh, DG, what if the ship blows up? Do you lose your NFT? No, you lose your ship in the game. Now, whether they're going to do insurance or whatever that is, you know, but they'll tie it to the NFT, right? However, or maybe you blow it up in game and you have to actually buy it with the token now, right? I don't know how they're they're setting that up. I don't know how they're planning on designing that. But I do know that you're not losing the NFT. You still own the NFT of the ship. That might be worth something. Who knows? Depending upon what? Scarcity. Imagine, right? Let's see. We, we translate this over to a Star Citizen discussion. Talk about only a certain amount of uh, Banu Merchantmen, only a certain amount of 890s, right? They do this all the time. They do this artificial scarcity all the time. Well, they'll probably do it in Star Atlas as well, and they'll do the artificial scarcity. I think they already have. They've got crazy ships for crazy prices uh, that you can buy with the Atlas token right now, right, that will translate over to actual value. What that value will be on those assets, who knows? However, I can tell you this for 100% sure, they will be worth something. They will be worth something. There will be demand there. Unless the game falls flat on its face and is a failure, and then they will all have no value, right? That's how it works. That's how it works in this space. <laughs> For example, by extension of this, it funds the Dow Treasury, which can then be utilized for ecosystem growth and development, a bigger and better and more robust game environment. Now, there's one major update here with the addition of the Atlas Locker. By setting Polis as the reward mechanism to Atlas Locking, we enable players to utilize Atlas to gain access to governance and political strategy, and we further embed. Now, I don't like when tokens get locked. This is one of the things that I get really upset about when I hear staking. Staking mechanisms or, or, or staking token is you gain rewards, right? They say, okay, and this, this, is, this is why I love Cardano. This is why I love ADA. This is why I love crypto that doesn't lock you into something. This is one of the major benefits, I think, on a, on a staking token like Cardano versus others where you've got a staking mechanism here with Atlas that is their token, correct? And then they say, okay, well, you have to lock it up for a certain amount of time. That certain amount of time, nothing, you can't do anything with this token. It is locked. You cannot touch it. It is there, but we give you re your re uh, rewards. Well, what is your reward going to be at the end of all this? Because it's such a new space. You don't know what it is you're going to get. And in the meantime, you're locking those tokens up. So if the token value goes down and depreciates like with well, like every token's done in the past year, then what ends up happening is you're not benefiting at all. Like you're not benefiting at all because it's going down in value. And I don't like when my tokens are locked. I do not get involved with tokens that are locked in a staking mechanism. And uh, you have proof of stake, right? And you have a proof of work. Bitcoin is like a proof of work uh, coin. 
Um, staking coins, Ethereum just went over to proof of stake, which very, very interesting. Ethereum used to be proof of work, changed over to proof of stake. What does this all mean? If you stake your tokens, you get rewards. It's like an interest payment. You get interest on it, right? Certain tokens, when they're stake tokens, are locked though. And other tokens, like Cardano, you can stake it and then you can unstake it as quick as you stake it. You can even spend tokens that aren't staked, which is really interesting. Uh, one of the only blockchains I know of to do it, even though they've been pummeled into the ground. I mean, like Cardano right now is like everybody's whipping boy. It's ridiculous. Poor Charles always getting on, getting upset about shit. But anyway, I don't like this because what ends up happening is they're trying to create value for their token. So why I'm talking about all this so you understand the mechanisms of, of the Atlas token is they're staking the token and then they're locking it. You can't touch it. When you lock a certain amount of value of these tokens up or you lock it up, it, it creates a value for the token because nobody can buy or sell those particular tokens. So you're creating a base. You're creating a, a base value by locking tokens up that cannot be traded on an exchange, okay? So they're creating a demand pump. They're creating a demand pump because what happens when you're locking those away, people cannot buy those. So it creates a scarcity, you understand? So how they're going about it, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a wrong way to go about it is they're relatively new and they're trying to create value for their token. But that always puts, a pers personally, when I when I see these stake tokens that get locked, it kind of personally puts a bad taste in my mouth because I understand the, the marketing. I understand what they're trying to do. And you know, while it does work a lot, I don't necessarily think that's good standard business practices and, and ethical. So generally me, I don't like when those tokens get locked up because I know I, I can smell it. You know what I mean? Like I can smell it. Bed every gamer into the ecosystem. What do you mean what by digital real today, estate? However, uh, what's the new connection? The connection between the marketplace and the DAO. With the addition of fees, the marketplace becomes yet another driver of revenue into the DAO. And this is really important. Yeah, as I mean, we like start to rebalance. Yeah, land, the, the like a land and the value of land is tied to actual demand. So be very careful when you're looking at like games like Sandbox, right? You saw like Sandbox go nuts last summer. Or the, I don't know exactly when. I think it was, uh, yeah, the, the summer before last. I can't even remember now. It's been so long. This bear market's been horrible. But like, yeah, like you saw demand go crazy. Now, now Sandbox land is the cheapest it's ever been. There's no demand anymore, you know? Uh, although I will say this, if you think it's going to be a popular title, if you think it's something that's going to last through the years and you think there's some value in it personally through your own research and experience of gaming and you see land that is dirt cheap, you know, this is not financial advice, but perhaps you would want to put a little money in there and buy it. But that's your own prerogative and that's still very risky to do. Very risky to do. The space is so new. You don't know what game's going to make it and what game's not going to make it. And when you buy land in a game, especially, you know, in, in the metaverse, right? Nobody, we don't have solid, we don't have solidity to the metaverse yet. We do through our VR videos. We watch with Thrill Seeker. We're seeing these spaces, uh, you know, we're seeing the evolution of it. But when you start to incorporate actual value into it with these digital assets, you have to be very careful because some of these will not see the light of day. Some of these will not survive, right? So that's my advice. Uh, that is not financial advice. That is my opinions on... <laughs> I am not responsible for anything. <laughs> these are my opinions, right? So... So just tread carefully in this space, okay? Tread very carefully in this space. Do the research. Certain economic drivers between players and pull stakeholders. Yeah, I can't. Or for crafting. First. I can't watch this portion anymore. Are we going to get into like game, gameplay? Like, look, I just want you guys to know, like, okay, so I'm now... 20 more minutes into this. We're still talking about the economy. Uh, oh, we got this this girl here. Uh, she was behind a white wall. Now now we've got... Okay, do you, do you remember this girl? For those that have been following Star Atlas and our journey with Star Atlas, uh, we were like, we were a bit uh like taken aback when, when, the, when the sound was horrible and she was standing in front of a white wall. You guys remember her? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So let's see now. It looks like we're updating. It looks like we're updating the look. She's speaking to an alien. She's she's speaking to an alien. forever. Also, regarding the DAO, I think it's important to mention again that the DAO represents the entire community. No matter what you do, you actually will only need some police voting power. Yeah, no, it's true. And, you know, it's really awesome to be here on the forefront of such a great, you know, opportunity. I don't know if she really believes that. I don't feel like she really believes that. I feel bad because it looks like she's, you know, I, I, were we mean in the, like, I feel like we were mean in the reaction. Like, it looks like now she's put makeup on and done her hair differently. And like, I would just like to say, like, I feel like ashamed because I know that people in the chat were like, who is this girl with the fake lips and the collagen and all this shit? And I was just like, I didn't say anything, but I felt kind of bad for her. And now, like, now I'm seeing, like, she's changing her look, and I don't want to be the reason why she needs it. You were, listen, this, this woman's beautiful. You don't need any, and who am I to judge? Look at me. I got a horrible mustache, for God's sake. I got a cursed mustache. That, that, this, that, it's an artifact on my lip right now that's giving me all types of bad mojo, okay? So if there's any, I just, I feel like this, is, her audio is still bad, though. Her, her audio is still bad and just really a great time to be here this early in the Star Atlas ecosystem. So for more information on the sustainable governance framework, please refer to the governance framework white paper that will be dropped in the chat for you now. And with all of that Atlas that has been piling up for you in no, the score, no, 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 lock it in. No, can somebody help her? Can somebody please help her? Listen, listen. Her audio, guys, like, ah, uh, listen, the community director is in our Discord. Um, the gentleman who is making content is in our Discord. First off, let me just say, the format's a lot better. So I will give applause for the format being upgraded a bit, which is nice. Can we please check the audio levels from people before they start making content, man? Like we're getting all types of artifacting and, and reverb off of this and, and echoing and, and, and it's terrible. It's terrible. Now on the Dow page, the link to do so will be dropped in the chat now. <laughs> but before we hop into our next product drop, how do you all feel about some exclusive sneak peeks? Oh, I mean, what? Santi... I don't know about you, but I feel that any Star Atlas event would not be complete without some exclusive sneak peeks. What do you say? Ash, you know me. You know me. Sneak peeks? I mean, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. All right. So the lore being built around Star Atlas is incredibly important. I can't, you understand. Not only you understand I can barely hang on. Like, I mean, as a viewer, everybody else here, we can all agree, can't we? That we're having a very hard time just hanging on to what it is that they're trying to say because the audio is so bad. Why do I have to be this guy? Why do I have to be this guy? I do not want to be this guy right now. But like this is this is just the 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 the, the plain truth. Let's fast forward. Let's get past this. Wait, wait, wait. What does this say here? Hold on a second. My stomach's, I'm so hungry right now, by the way. My stomach's eating itself right now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What is, what is this? Tim McBurney, lead artist, illustrator, and author. Okay. Passions from within. Let's take a look at the upcoming Star Atlas graphic novel for <laughs> with Tim McBurney. All right. Thanks, Ash. Hey, everyone. My name's Tim McBurney. I'm an author an illustrator and lead artist at Automata. <laughs> and my team has a special, unique I focus. am also Our a goal sex is god. To explore I can teach you universe. the secret way. Today, I'd like to introduce to you Core, <laughs> to make a story set your partner's orgasm the like they have never orgasmed before. Gia as he traverses <laughs> the Star Atlas universe. His world is changed forever as a visit to a planet in the high risk zone causes <laughs> catastrophic damage to his team and his ship. It's what a is, tale what of is this? heroism, heartbreak, no. epic adventure. Like the, I get it, it's concept art, but like Jesus, no, what what even was that? And it's going to be out later this year. Mm. We aim to build on what continues to make yeah, build. Star Atlas successful. What's that? A rich and complex world okay. deeply intertwined with new technologies. That looks like a giant that... penis. Listen, 
obviously they got their <laughs> obviously they got their idea from the freelancer. Uh, but that looks like a giant flying sexual device. There's nothing about like what is this banana? <laughs> like what? He's talking about a really deep lore experience, an in-depth, uh, uh, wonderful traversal. If you really love the cosmos, and oh, I have a wonderful aroma while I'm speaking. But you got like a like what is this? What is this? What is it? Continue to push the boundaries for immersive storytelling. Now, Core is going to be an engaging and amazing graphic novel if I have anything to do with it. But for the Star Atlas community, it's even more. This is going to be the first time that you're going to get a chance to go. Don't assume. I, I love these guys. Don't assume you know what the gamers want. You have not gotten it right yet. You have not gotten it right yet to assume that you know what the gamers want. Can I get a fucking amen on that one, please, Pepe? Yes, sir! Can I get an amen? Yes! <laughs> you literally have tripped over yourselves the entire way. <laughs> Every step. The fact that you even can get up still, it should be applause. But, like, let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. Dude deeper into the lore and What's discover up, the story that was mapped out in the original Rebirth posters. Lore is the fabric that stitches together a great universe. It's a record and a history of what is happening and what has yeah, happened. Props for the and good audio at least, right, Cooper? of that history that allows us to better <laughs> understand and appreciate <laughs> the characters that inhabit and share this world with us. But it also allows us some extra insight into how we might shape the future as players and participants in the metaverse. It's what allows us to hopefully change the lore in the future. For Star Atlas, it's the foundation upon which our universe is built. It's how we understand. We, we understand. We, we get it. Can we just... We get it. The lore is important. We know. We know this. <laughs> this is not groundbreaking information here. A story and a narrative is very important to a video game. <laughs> Woo! This is not like revolutionary fucking information here. What is going Stand on? A deep, complex, factional rivalry. If it's so exists. deep and complex, if it's so deep and complex, why do I feel like this was drawn by a third grader? Why? <laughs> Why does this look like the back, the puzzle on the back of every cereal box in 1980? <laughs> Why does this look like the image of <laughs> of 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 uh, put onto plastic wrap around paper towels? Why does this look like every image I've ever seen from a third grade art project? <laughs> is, why? How is it so deep and immersive? Within the game and within the world, it's how we understand what it's going to be like to live and exist in a deeply interconnected, <laughs> complex Cooper. science fiction universe. And... For the graphic novel, it's where we'll learn what's worth fighting for and why we have to go through the Convergence War to get to the other side, to get to a paradise of space proliferation. So who's creating this graphic novel and no. prequel? No, I don't want to know about the graphic novel. I want to know about the fucking game. I want to know about the game. Okay, let's get to the game here. What are we doing? But before I do, I want to shed some light and give some background. Star Atlas is like many windows that open into the same universe. These windows are our gaming modules that we're developing, and one of them is our web browser-based group strategy minigame, currently codenamed Project Scream. I don't want a minigame! One of the key decisions we made earlier this year on the project was to develop the game using a 3D web game no. engine, as opposed to building the game with a text-based 2D UI. No, 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 
No. Shame. Shame. I don't want you to waste Shame. your time on a mini game. I want you to put your time into the game. Oh, I can't. I can't do this. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm trying so hard. Listen, I've got I've got some subscribers here for Star Atlas content. And listen, I'm sure the people that are here for the Star Atlas content are wondering the same thing as I am. Why are we using these why are we using employee time resources towards mini games and not focusing on the actual core development? Like why are we focusing on it right now? There's no sense in that. There's absolutely it's nonsensical. Why would you waste that? Why would you waste that resource into a mini game? I have not seen anything yet. I have not seen anything for the actual game yet. On our foundation kit, I'm Jim Carter. Here we go. Distinguished engineer. All right. I get to work okay. with both the okay. web and Unreal game teams. Okay. For the last 25 plus years, I've been developing video games, visual simulations, flight simulators, that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. What is the foundation kit and why are we so excited about it? Okay. What's well, the one library to rule them all? F it. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, F it. Basically, it's both a F wallet it, like Phantom or Soulflare. So okay. it's a Solana wallet. Yes, we know about the wallet. And it's also a Web3 JS implementation for Unreal, which yes. enables Unreal to interact with the blockchain uh, cool. Solana blockchain over RPC. Codes. Cool. That's cool. So yes. obviously, we can't have a Web3 game without blockchain interaction, right? Um and in all seriousness, I, uh, you know, the thing that got me really excited about joining Star Atlas, I thought I had a bad uh, double chin. Ago, is this concept of player ownership <laughs> and of real economic benefit that are core to Star Atlas ethos. The blockchain enables that not just in Star Atlas, but the entire ecosystem of tokenized exchange of value that a blockchain provides uh, just breaks down the, gall, the, gall, the walled garden of traditional MMO gaming today. The walled garden, like that's something he had in his head that he wanted to get out and say. Um, this is all very pre-scripted. Um, you know, I do like the fact that they're going to connect these um, together and that you will be able to do a lot of the, the wallet functions in the game. I do think that's actually cool. Um, I really want a game to do it correctly, like in a really cool UI kind of format. I think that would be fucking fantastic if they could do it. Um, so you know the the function of the, the the functionality of things translating from a website into the game and from the game back to the site where the data is held is all because of blockchain um, because transactions are recorded and uh, that data being able to be read in the game and uh, transacted in game is is phenomenal. That's so cool. That's really cool. Um, but this guy's really not like expressing any of these thoughts to you. He's, you know, like, like I, I'm, I'm just telling you, this is such a bad presentation. This is another bad presentation is what is what I'm seeing here. This is another bad presentation. Up the potential for development of their own the 3D audience, experience. Listen, listen, I can't, I can't get through it. I uh, hold on, hold on. Let's one. I'm going to give it one last chance here. Hold on a second. What are we seeing here? Uh, we're seeing more art, more artwork. Is there? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah here. Yes, uh, you're not gonna hate me. It looks like we might have some game footage. Hold on. Thanks for the scale. Uh, anybody who owns a ship this size, yeah, bring it in and take a look because it's it's a beauty. Um, okay, all right. And all when right. you bring it into an environment like this, one of the purposes we, we of having all that before, foliage, a nice little garden ship, is trees and bushes kind of help, help us get a sense of, of Listen, the environment, the environments are quite beautiful. I like the environments. Uh, player animations can be worked on a little bit, but like I, I'm saying, everything looks fairly smooth with UE5. Uh, the the ship asset in the background is interesting to me. Um, let's keep going. Of, of scale, because it's very relatable. Uh, we introduced the teleportation yeah, the, the uh, horrible. functionality yeah, because it was a big environment, so being able to move around quickly is very helpful. Audio um, shame. So you can choose from indoor or outdoor yeah, I don't locations. Like... This is technology that will exist. Audio shame. Audio shame does need to happen here. We do need another shaming of audio. I mean, like, we're, we're getting audio all over the shame. fucking place with this. Shame. We do need some audio shaming. Shame. Yeah. 
for us audiophiles out there, this is not working for us. Some very key uh, places where energy lines converge uh, throughout the Star Atlas universe. That was cool. I like um, that. And and the Fatoli have been able to harness that energy and create some teleportation technology. So Showroom is one of those special places that that exists. Uh, here we go with the faction leaders. Great. So we got the three Madoni Uster faction leaders on uh, who were the founders of the factions. We have the contemporary leaders that are in the current. Uh, timeline of the game great artwork love the monuments you know like here's the thing i want to get to and this should be right up at the front of the fucking presentation this is why i keep telling people this is how you need to do this this is how you need to market star atlas you put all the interesting things up in the front of the presentation this very interesting got the eye candy art's looking great the, the landscapes looking great environments uh the 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 ship even though not finished in a gray box format very interesting to me like this is how these things should start really talk about the economy talk about all the facets uh, the mechanics involved with the tokens later that's fine and good but start out here about the content of the game and then the three signers of the Treaty of Peace. I mean, how far are we into this? We just got the it. Council of Peace that allowed the flourish. Two hours. Two hours. Like, literally two hours into this, you know? There was a couple cinematics, I think, up at the front. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, you know, it looks like they had a couple cinematics up towards the front. So, you know, maybe they're doing some things right. But really, as a gamer, I want to see gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> flourishing of these three economies in space and the beauty of this lighting is just it's jaw dropping <laughs> and as you can see um, all these things have been worked on in excruciating detail to push the quality standards the high soundtrack as possible and the music's very within good. the time frame that we gave ourselves we're still improving and the, the follow up releases will, will be even better and people are going to be your mind's going to be really blown but this is a very yeah, I think, playable release and and you can i think i think a lot of people are underestimating it um but we still need more information on the actual dev team like that it, it's the same thing i said a, a month or so ago when i was talking about this we still need content Of the actual business, the, the people in the uh, who are the people, the dev team, like, let's focus on making content that's very transparent. Show us the dev team. Show us the work that we're seeing right now. Like, this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. But m actually make like an episode that's fun to watch <laughs> where you're talking about the people who are making the game. Right. Let's let's watch. Let's look at the dev team. Let's let's listen to them. What experience do they have? Let's talk about them a little bit. Right, and like obviously, this is what's kind of lacking. This this type of content is lacking, and I think it's there, and I think people really don't know any better because they don't put this content out there. And I think that the game in itself is is a very underestimated thing. I think it's going to come out, and it's if if all the things line up, and there's some type of playable experience. I think I think there's going to be a lot of people that go, hmm, you know. I think there will be. I think there will be that moment. Not quite sure. Still kind of uh, about it because there's not enough transparency yet. I like the the fact that they're doing more of this. I just think they need to do it better, <laughs> better. Kind of see and get in and 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 see your inventory. The next area is is uh, we have these corners. Um, to the point of making them in, in the showroom <laughs> where you can kind of take a look, a quick look at the different. Uh, ship models, like say you don't necessarily own them yet, but you can just take a quick look and in the little miniature showcasing of of the different manufacturers. We have Fimble in that corner. Yeah, it looks got, great. Uh, uh, yeah, another quick look down at the main hall. Yeah, you can get multiple angles by being in the top top level to kind of take a look at these ships and and take some take some cool photos. I mean, for now, that's kind of. You know, the, the fun part of this experience is to, to see what this digital property will eventually 
grow into. Again, interaction things like the the elevator and, and, and that making that work and standardizing that for all the ships and environments and every other place in the entire game uh, will use this base technology. And the more and more we do that, the, the easier it is to expand these environments in a very quick way. Yeah, take another quick shot. You can see you're starting to fill out. You got the Pier C11, you got the it will be interesting to see how this runs on the Solana blockchain. I know like in terms of now, this is something that's like a, a, a spot, a blind spot for me. I'm not quite sure exactly how the game is going to function. If it's going to be actually piped through the blockchain and or just transactions like I, I, I don't know that I'm not very well versed in. I'm not quite sure. I know I know Solana is very scalable. Um, I know that it handles tons of transactions per second. A lot probably the, the fastest because it uses proof of history which is different from other blockchains but but i'm not quite sure exactly how the game itself is going to be piped through like they're going to probably run this on servers uh are they going to have the money for servers i don't know or are they going to run it through actually solana blockchain that's something i don't know i don't know that you know yeah i think all transactional basis will be through the solana blockchain and they will they will get their own servers through AWS or who whoever, but like I hear like Solana blockchain, and I think to myself like you know, I'm pretty sure that's just transactional. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're not going to be running the actual game from the Solana blockchain because I don't think that technology exists. You know, so when you hear blockchain gaming, that that's an area where I'm kind of muddled about. Like that's an area I don't know too much about is actual technic the 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 technicals like the transactional side i'm i'm 110 percent sure all the transactional side will be running through the solana blockchain right but in terms of like actually connecting right they're not using the blockchain network they're going to use a server-based network right so i'm not quite sure how this game's going to run like looking at this here just solo one dude running around right i see a lot of hiccups i'm seeing a lot of hiccups I'm seeing a lot of portions where it's kind of staggered and that's just with like one dude, you know? So apologies about that. I'm not quite sure how that works out. The Calico Compact Hero and the Fimble Mamba there in one shot. It's really, it's really fun to, to bring these all into to one experience. I won't ruin every corner, but we got Pierce and Calico and uh, Opal ships that you can also see in the in the showroom in those corner showcase areas. We've got the story of of humankind as they uh, became a spacefaring species and and they were visited by Fatoli and then they ruined the planet and took off to space with that fleet that they built uh which when they ran into these other aliens yeah, and robot life very caused basic. the major war the 10 year convergence war and then ultimately the signing of the treaty of the peace uh, and there you have it thanks for walking through the showroom with me i can't tell you how excited i am to get this into the hands of the community and anyone interested in star atlas so they can all take part in this development process together have fun Oh, we got Michael back on here. And the audio is not working at all right now. I don't know about you, but I am completely blown away right now. Like, holy cow. Me too, Ash. This is, this is unbelievable. So cool. So cool. They're trying too hard. They're trying too hard. Like, I, I, think, I think they're so worried about public opinion that they're coming off really fake. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel any genuine, like, you know, I, I feel like, uh, Santee maybe I don't, I don't feel like Ashley. I'm not, I'm not convinced that even Michael <laughs> sitting there feels that, that, that passionate about it. Like, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I can't. Yeah. I, I don't, it just doesn't come off the page. Well, you know, it just does not come off the page. Very I absolutely well. love it. Like the I audio cannot game. wait to get in there and start looking for those Easter eggs that Danny had teased us about. Previously. I mean, why does Michael just not stop everything right now? If I were Michael, I'd be like, Ashley, your audio is horrible. Why has nobody helped you with your audio? Can somebody help? Can somebody help Ashley's audio right now? Like that's a, why is Michael – I would literally be saying what the fuck is going on here that our audio is this subpar when I'm trying to, you know, display this. Yeah, it's giant wet fart. It is giant wet <laughs> fart. 
I am so sorry. Like, listen, I'm trying to give constructive criticism here, right? I want the game. I, I, I have some type of desire for this game, right? It seems like they've kind of upped the bar a little bit in production value. So, you know, kudos, kudos on that. We'll give them a little bit on that. Uh, not much. Not much. <laughs> yeah, right. They're going to give me an email to cease and desist. Right, right. But for the most part, I'm feeling more like this with, when I watch this, you know? And the sad thing is... <laughs> The sad thing is I can't I can't really finish it. I can't really finish this. And I think that's what I'm getting at. You know, we we've, we've been talking about this way too long. But when you feel Ooh, like the people thank you explode off. Then bring it down hard. Someday. What are you doing? Dance off, bro. Thank you Explodo. I appreciate those biddies, bro. That's going to my car. That's going to my car. Listen. I don't feel any genuine passion. I didn't see gameplay till the three quarters in the video. Again, I saw more focus on, you know, the the token and, you know, the the, the financial side of things. And I, I think they're just going about it wrong. And I'm sticking to that. I do think, I do think that they upped their production value slightly. We got to work on audio, guys. Um, I think you're slowly getting there. I think you're slowly finding the way, but you're really doing an utterly horrible job at, at trying to get there. Just get up and use your feet. Quit crawling. <laughs> get up and walk forward, okay? Just do it because it's the only way the game's going to be successful. 